After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. In the name of God with us. Amen. Amen. Scatterbrain 2015 writes, I have a coworker who frequently calls people by name in casual interaction like, hello X and see you tomorrow X. To me, it just sounds forced and pointless. I may be biased because I don't really like my name and I don't care about people's names. I will care about you and who you are as a person, what your goals and dreams are, that silly childhood story you told me, but I do not care about your name. As a result, I pretty much never say someone's name unless I'm trying to get their attention. How do you feel about this? Do people generally care in your experience? Signed, Scatterbrain. Scatterbrain has shared this question on Reddit, a sort of discussion and information sharing platform. And the responses to Scatterbrain's query come fast and thick. Fishing in Bologna writes, I love it when people call me by my name. I have a habit of thinking myself forgettable. And when people use my name, it makes me feel, I don't know, like a person. It sounds weird to put it this way. I also love it when people spell my name correctly. <laughs> it's not the usual spelling, so the fact that someone might take an extra second to double check that they're correct makes me feel the warm fuzzies. Others chime in quickly, mostly to agree with fishing in Bologna, not her real name. <laughs> then something remarkable happens. Scatterbrain writes back. I see. That makes sense. Thank you. We'll be sure to pay attention to these things. Today, January 1st, is of course New Year's Day. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> but it's also the day on which Christians of different denominations around the world mark the feast of the holy name of Jesus. Luke, by tradition a doctor as well as the author of the gospel in the book of Acts, tells us with pointed references to the physicality of Jesus and to the events of these days, these events of the birth. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Flesh and blood, just like us. Luke's son of man will come eating and drinking, and Luke's is perhaps the gospel in which we best understand Jesus as robed in flesh. Having a name, hearing one's own name on the lips of those we love, in particular, has a physical manifestation as well. Serotonin and dopamine, compounds present as neurotransmitters in our bodies, actually release at the sound of our own names. Perhaps this is why the addict's naming of the self and the group repetition of the shared name are unvarying elements of recovery group dynamics. The consequence of all of that are feelings of calm, and security. Some research claims that even those in persistent vegetative states can respond positively to the sound of their own names. So hard science undergirds fishing in Bologna's testimony. I love it when people call me by name. She's only human, after all. In Luke's gospel, the last words spoken to Jesus will be, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. These are the words of the repentant thief, 
dying on the cross, dying on the adjacent cross. He doesn't say, Lord, in the NRSV translation, Lord, the form of address used approximately 700 times across the Gospels, not master or teacher, which was the disciples' favorite name for Jesus. No, he says, Jesus. Jesus. The holy name. The intimate name. Jean, Ruth, Donna, Andrew, Bill, Bob. Jesus. In the darkness at noon, in a seeming eternity of wormwood and bitter gall and public shaming and searing pain, his name, his holy name, fully divine, but also human. It's the human dimension, the serotonin and dopamine firing that this season and this particular day and Luke's recounting invite us to remember Jesus. Jesus, it's a variant of Joshua, a common enough name at the time. The first syllable, syllable descended from the Hebrew name for God, Yah, Yahweh, the second from the Semitic root for the verb to rescue. So Jesus, Yeshu, God saves. The understanding of a God, the understanding of a God who has taken on a specific name, as well as flesh, is part of what makes Christianity, our faith, so very radical. Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, rendered without consonants, later translated into Jehovah, was, in some Jewish communities, a forbidden utterance. Yahweh roughly translates as the creator of creation. It overlaps in its beauty and in its mystery with the first person of our trinity, the dimension of God about which our creed actually makes the fewest claims, creator of heaven and earth of all that is, seen and unseen. Islam has 99 names or attribute, attributes for God, Allah. Al-Rahim, the most merciful. Al-Malik, possessor of supreme power, and so on. The 100th name is unknown to humankind, understood as unknown to humankind, beyond all knowledge and all thought. A beautiful mystery. None of these 99 Attributes are ever given as names to children without a prefix. So, Abdal Rahim, servant of the most merciful. The name Jesus, then, the naming itself, tells us something distinct about our life as God with Christians and our life with each other. And it seems to me this morning that this something has to do with a kind of intimacy a kind of intimacy. This is what Paul is getting at in his letter to the church in Galatia. You are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God, an heir through God, a child of God's. The joy of Bethlehem is the joy of intimacy. A God who has come among us to share the entire experience of being human. Feast and fast, community and solitude, birth and death, love and betrayal, shelter and homelessness, anointing and abandoning. There is so much in a name, his name, your name, the joy of Bethlehem, the joy of the nativity. Here's how the poet W.H. Auden saw it in the concluding verses of for the time being. It's his long Christmas poem, an oratorio. And he imagines us this week dismantling the tree, burning the holly and the mistletoe, preparing our families for the resumption of working and school. But he also writes, quote, 
remembering the stable, wherefore once in our lives everything became a you and nothing was an it. Everything a you, nothing an it. This God who comes among us, the mystery of God assuming flesh, the mystery of God assuming a name among our names, signals our belonging in a network of love. And to repeat the sounding joy is, I think, in part about his name and our names. His name and our names. How we use his name how we use each other's names is in part the foundation of beloved community. Calls you one and calls you all, we sing, to claim his everlasting hall. The God who asserts you out, the God who knows you, knows you by name. The Jesus who takes on flesh and the name among our names knows you by name. The only reason for invoking Jesus' name, writes Brother Curtis Almquist of the Society of St. John the Evangelist, the only reason for invoking Jesus' name is for the sake of love. So that we may love Jesus and be loved by Jesus and then offer others love in Jesus' name. That is, as Jesus loves them. Hello, X. See you tomorrow, X. It's a matter of remembering, isn't it? Of articulating, of risking, calling someone by the wrong name. Sorry. Of dopamine, of serotonin. It's a matter of those who felt invisible and unseen, made to feel welcomed and present, named. And it's a matter to consider as we begin a new year of life and community. His holy name, your holy name. Everything a you, nothing an it.